All right, so I wanted to talk about technology. Why should we bother with technology? And there are lots of reasons that we should bother, but one of them is we can do things with technology, we can do mathematics that we cannot do any other way. We cannot do with pencil and paper. And I want to show you a few examples of tools that I use that represent this. So this is a dynamic tool where kids get to drag around some triangles. They're different colors, they behave different ways, and their goal is to notice and list everything they can about these triangles. What's true about them, what's always true, what's never true, what's sometimes true, what happens to them. This is, they get to build some intuition about shapes that behave in certain ways and have certain characteristics. The way that we usually teach shapes, we give them a name like isosceles, and then we give them a laundry list of things that go along with that name, and they are somehow supposed to stick that in their brain and see how it connects to everything else. Instead, let them make the list of things and say, you know, that red triangle, here's a lot of things we know about it, and you go, that red triangle, we have a name for that, we call it isosceles, but now they have a place to put that name because they've already internalized all of the other pieces of that. So building intuition around shapes and characteristics and math that comes from them, that's one reason we want to use technology. Another reason, so here's another example called uh, runners, and here we have a tool where children can sort of make sense of how does the tool work, what's going on, what do the buttons do, what do the different pieces do, like starting position, step size, what's all that about. Kids are developing to intuition about distance, rate, and time, and even the concept of slope, and they don't have to know any of those words. They can just talk about it, and they can make sense of how it works. And what I usually do with this app is I'll give them graphs, finished graphs, like the lower right part, and ask them, get the thing to generate this graph, whatever you have to do. And they can do trial and error. They can try as many times as they want, and the thing gives them feedback. Does my graph look like this other graph? Right? So the technology is giving them instant feedback and letting them do trial and error. And no one is telling them whether they're right or not. So we get to remove ourselves. We should not be the arbiters of what is right in the classroom. The kids should be going, wait, that's not right. It doesn't match the picture. They get to try again. Just like Phil was talking about last night, it doesn't matter whether it takes them one time or 10 times. If they get it, they get it. Here's another one. You've landed on an alien planet. You're really hungry. You find this vending machine. Somehow you actually have some of their money in your pocket. Never sure how that part works. Right? So you start putting money in the vending machine. And this app keeps track of what money did you put in, what did you buy, and how much change did you get, and what did the change look like. Right? So you just put stuff in, and you generate all this data, and the app keeps track of the data for you. It's very organized. As you know, students are not always that good at organizing things. Humans are not that good at organizing things. Kids are developing intuition and methods of solving and thinking about simultaneous equations without even having to be able to spell simultaneous. Right? They don't know anything about that, but kids can interact with this. I've used this with a bunch of kids who are not even my own students, and they go to town in figuring out how are the values of the different coins related, and they go, oh, wait buy this with this and see what happens. They want to know what happens. They have some ideas. Right? When these kids get to real simultaneous equations and all that fancy formal procedure, stuff, they have the background. Here's a program. If you're really old, if you knew this when you were teaching, you are dating yourself. This is from like 1982. I wrote a paper on it in college. This is an example of it's a Boolean logic machine and you get to sort of figure out how to get it to do what you want it to do. All of these tools were available before the turn of the century. And since at least 1980, NCTM has been encouraging us to use technology to do true, meaningful things in mathematics, not for drill and practice. Kids should be exploring. They should be discovering. They talk about it in pretty much every major thing they've put out. There has been a technology piece. And they have all been focused around conceptual understanding and deep reasoning. A few years ago, I was a speaker at a um, technology integration conference focused on math, and people encouraged me to go to a couple of different talks. One of them was just, it was really low-level stuff, stuff you could have done on paper, maybe not quite as quickly, but nothing special. And the other was this group who would show you how to do Jeopardy in PowerPoint. And people are holding this up as the pinnacle of technology integration, and I'm thinking, <laughs> We need to be doing better than that. If you think at this big conference that that is the best thing that we can do with technology, you really need to revisit some of these ideas about this is what we should be doing with technology. We should be exploring understanding. In just this year's document, 2014, we should use technology to promote mathematical reasoning and sense making. Right? You guys use, we all use technology every day in education. You need to look at when you use technology in your instruction and make sure that at least some of the time you are picking tools that encourage your students to explore, discover, 
do sense making and to do deep, deep mathematical reasoning. Thank you. <laughs>